talking about our idea. Our idea of rockers in rocking chairs talking about amazing rock stories. At least one story. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a that's a great idea. So make what a would podcast it, or something out of it, well, right? That, 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 that's what we were gonna do. Okay, so yeah. yeah, make a podcast. Yeah, get get in touch with people that have been in the business. And you the, seem to know everybody in the planet because he everybody, is a, but I know pe I know people who know people and I know people who are the people that you'd want to talk to about right. this kind of thing. And they uh I've talked to a few of them and they're they're down with the idea. They think yeah. it's a great idea. Yeah. You know, well, talk it, about stories from the road, you know, as yeah. funny stories, right? Funny stories, change the names to protect crazy, the innocent. Yeah, yeah right. I want to talk crazy stories, which some of them may have. Mm -hmm. Um however, uh yeah, I think it's a great idea. I yeah, think people I would too. would really tune in and listen to that one because you know, especially fans of those cats you right, know those right. cats go back in the 60s right you know, right like uh Rich so you Spina. have one you have one i want to hear about which you told me a couple times the story about who was it poison asked you to play guitar for him oh yeah let's hear yeah. that story so 1997 mm -hmm. the beginning of the year 97 i'm in my studio i get a call from my buddy and he says hey I'm sitting in my studio, his studio as well. He goes, I'm sitting in my studio. And he goes, I'm talking to the manager of Poison. He says, I know you're busy in your studio, but would you entertain the idea of playing in the band Poison? And I'm like, what? what? And it was a, how old were you? I, uh, how old was I? 31, I think. I know I'm 31. It was because the reason I declined it, well, there was, there was several, it was 21, several, okay. <laughs> several reasons I declined it. The yeah. most important one was my first daughter, first child was about to be born mm -hmm. that coming May. Oh. So January, February. So could I have done a couple months in the studio? Probably, maybe yeah. we'll see. But, but touring, oh boy. They wanted an 18 month tour. Oh geez. The you money was anything? horrible. You yeah. know, it was just, hey, you're a hired gun. You're not the original member of yeah. Poison. You're not going to get paid like these guys. So it was kind of cool that he asked me if mm -hmm. I'd be interested in doing it. Um, it was their, not, it's kind of, my style's kind of bluesy, hard rock, you yeah. know, which is the direction that Poison was going at the time. Oh, really? So okay. they, did, they did end up getting a guy named Blues Saracino. Okay. Yeah, that was the cat's name. Blues hard rock guitar player. He you fit know? So right he there. fit the bill. I don't think he lasted very long. I don't think the band really did much. <laughs> I think they all got back together to do the reunion stuff. Yeah, and then wow. they do those boat tours. You know those love boat kind of tours. Yeah, and the like casinos. Metal, casinos. What do they call that? Not not just casinos, but in on a cruise ship. The oh yeah yeah stuff. meat so, rat on yeah the they're doing ship. that kind of thing now yeah kiss yeah. does them you know a lot of bands do them yeah because uh, people are a lot of age. 80s bands yeah that's what we do i mean what group. a party yeah so. yeah well that's cool yeah but, yeah so that was my story on that well there was one other thing i was going to talk about and i can't it remember was very it was. cool my brain is short, short and then memory. i produced a record for this band called bop dead bop dead bop dead b-o-p dead and the lead singer was danny fry who God rest his soul. Yeah. Died when he was 30. What's his story? I was story? working on a new album with him and he died. Who, who's, who's Danny Fry? His, his, he was from uh, Lakewood, Ohio. Lived in Lakewood. Yeah. And just, he was on TV a few times, you know, Texas Justice wow. Show, things like that. And he, uh, we had just finished a record, mastered it in Nashville. Yeah. So before we did that record, we did this record called Bop Dead. It was a punkish rockabilly kind of band that he put together yeah yeah so great music you know so i had these digital tapes they look like video cassette tapes I recorded eight channels on each machine i had yeah, yeah. four of them mm -hmm. most albums i did 24 tracks and used the other machine to back up tapes yeah so, anyway uh we're doing we do this record and their manager is like okay i need the tapes because Don Dixon, the producer of R.E.M., Hootie and the Blowfish, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and a couple other pretty well-known acts. Yeah. At the time, Don Dixon was the producer. You mm -hmm. know, local guy, lives out Akron way, somewhere out that way. Hmm. He, uh, he was gonna mix the record. So the manager 
gave him my phone number, you know, just just so he can contact me and let me know what he needed from me, you know, track yeah. sheets and whatnot, yeah. that kind of thing. Because everything was digital tape. Yeah, right. So there's no there's data no written da other than <laughs> yeah. just audio. You Those know, Pro Tools now has you could put all your notes in it and yeah. tell them what mic you use, whatever. So anyway, so I'm getting all that stuff together. He calls me up. He goes, hey, he goes, they sent me the stereo master that you mixed. Yeah. But I'd like to just master the mixes that you did. And then I think we're done. Hmm. So I'm like, really, Don? This is Don Dixon, the guy who won Grammys. Yeah, okay, yeah, right. For stuff he's doing. Wow. He's talking to me. I'm standing outside the deck from my studio just talking to this cat going wow okay and he uh yeah he asked for my mixes to be the mixes that are used on the album wow cool. so i said fabulous i'm like what a great compliment i says yes i can do that for you nice. well later on that day might have been the next day but i think it was maybe in the evening or something mm -hmm. the manager of the band calls me up and says no that's not going to happen we want Don Dixon to mix this. Mm. We want his name on the record. Oh, you know, that like, was it. Okay, all about. I got no, you. you get it. I understood that, but you know what? His ears, this guy's a Grammy winning producer. Yeah. If he thinks the mixes that he got to preview the songs yeah. are good enough to put out, I would respect that guy's ears, you know? Yeah. So, wow. So that never happened, but he how put it out. To, he put it out. And how do you get to know so many people, Eddie? I mean, you know, so many rockers out there on uh, international levels. I, I, I mean, think, I think a lot of that happened um, just because I was one of the five studios in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. um, I stayed on the cutting edge. You know, one thing people always tell me is what kind of, great drum sound I get for them. Yes. So people started talking yeah. and they were like, hey man, you got your recording. Some some of my studios are in the basement of my house. Okay. Yeah. You listen to it in your car, you're like, man, eh, doesn't sound Anywhere. like somebody's basement. You right. know, could have right. been done in a you know commercial studio. What's the name of your studio? Audio works. Audio works. Audio is the name of my studio. How can so how can people get a hold of you? Um my number basically four four zero four eight seven 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 eight three. That's four four zero four eight seven 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 eight three. There you go. Okay. And uh and yeah, so that 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 was one of the reasons, you know, people started talking, you know, pretty much everybody who's everybody in this town has been in my studio at least once or twice. Yeah, that's amazing. You know? So I mean it's and I bring them all back. I bring all the big guys back every year when I do a Christmas CD for my foundation, Good Intentions Foundation. Yeah. yeah. And what we do with that is we do a Christmas record every year, mm -hmm. you know, 15 to 20 songs. You know, yeah. I block off two months in in the fall, you yeah. know, and dedicate it to recording this Christmas album. So I bring everybody in there. I have guys from Love Affair. 70s band had a hit song yeah, mama right. says american noise <clears throat> mm -hmm. late 70s early 80s band amazing one yeah. of my favorite albums of all time yeah i don't care where they're from they sound amazing uh and boku guys have been in there um do you have some raspberry people from the raspberries rap raspberries oh raspberries yeah i i'm actually wor working on tracks for a raspberries tribute album with this cool. producer out of la he Heard about me. What worked yeah. out with that was Tommy Rich, drummer from American Noise, says, if I'm going to play drums on this record, I want to do it at the studio. I like to record my drums at. He gets a great yeah, sound. Yeah. So this cat called me up out of L.A. and he's like, hey, Tommy Rich recommended you. We talk details, blah, 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 blah. I did the record <laughs> and then I ended up doing a keyboard track for another one of the songs that the keyboard player who was playing on this new version of the song was the original keyboard player on the original version of the song. Mm -hmm. He lived four minutes down the street from my studio. Wow. So wow. he came in, great guy. Nice, nice. Great guy. Hey, but, I gotta, uh, I'm gonna switch gears. What What was it like to work with um, Todd Rundgren? Amazing, talented man. You all, know. all I remember is I came in the one artist. time. You told me he's practicing, he's practicing in your studio. Yeah, so and I built in 2008. I built a a giant studio as big as it, almost as big as this. Okay, yeah, it was yeah. a little bit too big, but uh, 
but we were building that and it was i think late july and my brother calls me up he's like hey todd rungren's looking for a studio to rehearse in for a couple of weeks is your studio do you still have your studio in your other commercial location i said no i'm out of there we're already in the new place and we're building mm -hmm. so we were doing construction in the in the new place and uh i think we had 17 18 foot ceilings you know big big room 24 yeah, i remember square feet, it. yeah giant so <clears throat> bigger than anything i've been used to um so anyway so i said are you serious? He goes, yeah. He goes, I'm friends with uh, Todd's son, Randy, mm -hmm. who lives in Parma, Ohio. Get out of here. And yeah, no, he's he's here. Where's Todd from? I think he has a place in San Francisco and a place in Hawaii, um, last I heard. But mm. uh, but yeah, so that was, uh, that was the beginning of a cool relationship with probably one of my biggest influences. All I remember is you told me that he was coming over there and – I, he just, you said, come on by and you could meet the guy. So I come in and I didn't want to go in the back door because I thought they were practicing in the back uh, in the big studio. It, yeah. So I went around to the front door and I'm hearing, wouldn't have made any difference. Four part harmony. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like knocking on the door. Oh, so they were in, they, they were, were in, in the, the front practicing, yeah, yeah, practicing yeah. singing. And I'm harmonies, like, oh right. God. So he opens the door and I didn't even recognize him. I was like, oh man. I said, like, can you go get Eddie for me? And he's like, uh, Oh uh, yeah, sure. So, <laughs> and Alex was with me. We yeah. we both came. Uh, yeah, I remember. The, I remember when Alex. you brought him. That was um, cool. So the thing I remember is walking into there mm. and all these beautiful guitars. All oh yeah, all yeah. he had some yeah. really nice guitars. I think he used ESP guitars. He had a green one. Beautiful. They're like one was painted with this woman on it, and I'm like, that, Whoa. that's a famous guitar. I that's a Eric it. Clapton gave to George Harrison really? gave to somebody. Oh, and it wow. was in my studio. And Todd that let me play so it. Cool. He's like, yeah, you could play it. He goes, it's just an SG. And I'm like, oh, just okay. Just an SG. <laughs> you know, but he had it. I don't yeah. I don't know if that he played it on stage. So what was cool with that was the, the work that I did in my other life, which is video production, mm -hmm. was, you know, we hosted him in the studio. They got to rehearse. You know, I got to meet members of the Cars, who was in his touring band. The drummer, uh, Prairie Prince from, the, the member from the Cars that I met was uh, Greg Hawks, mm -hmm. keyboardist. Yeah. Amazing man, great guy, talk to you about yeah, anything, right. just a sweet man. Yeah. And then Prairie Prince, drummer from the Tubes. Yeah. Amazing drummer, again, another gentleman, great guy. We were, we got along famously, you know, mm -hmm. he's just, I'd see them all kinds of times. When he came in into Columbus, he'd give me a call and be like, hey man, I'm in Columbus visiting my friend. Yeah. Goes, if you want to swing nice. out, you know. I was always too busy to make that trip. But when they did come through Cleveland, I'd end up doing video and photography stuff for their shows. Yeah. You know, right. just talk to their managers, like, hey, you know, see we had to get video we had to get video in here somewhere. So <laughs> we that's did. what our podcast we did. is. Remember the remember yeah. the Todd promo I made. I may yeah. remember that. Todd's doing his thing. So yeah, he was at the studio three times, three different occasions doing rehearsal stuff. Very nice. Classic album rehearsals. Yeah, so he would do that's that. That's cool. Never came back and did Herman and Mink Hollow, which was my favorite album by him mm -hmm. because I was 12. I bought that record. He had cool hair and I'm like, this got to sound good. You know, <laughs> but I knew it was Todd Runger. But I was 12, nice. so I was just learning stuff. So yeah. But anyway, that's... Uh, well, it's great, that's Eddie. Story, glad, but... Great to have you on this first uh, podcast about yeah. rock and roll. Rock and roll podcast, yeah. So, well, well, let's well. make this happen. Visit bvsfilmproductions.com or email info at bvsfilmproductions.com to find out more. Let's face it, everybody loves to make podcasts and vodcasts, but nobody wants to edit them. Well, except for us. At Premier Podcast Productions, we professionally edit and distribute podcasts and vodcasts for companies around the world. Our process is simple and affordable, allowing you to stay focused on what you do best, developing great content, and building your subscriber base. From recording and editing to final distribution and marketing, we can help every step of the way to make your podcast stand out and get the results it deserves. Contact us today at premierpodcastpros.com to take your podcast to the next level.